Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, here we have our second lecture for the fundamentals of physical chemistry. Uh, today our topic is gas laws and general gas equation. In gas laws, uh, we'll discuss two or three laws. So, first uh, is a Charles law. In today's the key concepts, we'll uh, discuss about uh, Charles law, then combined gas law, and geodesics law then Avogadro moral gas volume and ideal gas equation. So uh, these gases we'll discuss in today's lecture. We'll have uh, some idea about it. And then we move to the next slide. Here we have the gas law, which is the Charles law. Before this, we discussed about the Boyle's law, which was the first law. And now uh, we are going to discuss the second gas law, which is the Charles law. This law is basically uh, uh, this law shows relationship between volume and temperature. So how a gas behaves uh, when uh, their pressure and number of holes are constant but temperature is increased then what will be the behavior of gas? It will show uh, the increase in volume. In Boyle's law, we studied the inverse relationship between the pressure and volume. But here, in Charles' law, we'll study that there is a, a direct relationship between the volume and the temperature. If pressure and number of moles are kept constant, uh, by number of moles, we already discussed that we uh, uh, take number of moles as uh, the number of particles of a gas or the number of atoms. So. If uh, the number of moles or the number of the particles are constant and the pressure is kept constant, then there will be a direct relationship between volume and temperature. This is the Charles law. So uh, we can define it uh, that at constant pressure and uh, the volume of a fixed mass of a gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature or the absolute temperature. So uh, if the absolute temperature is double, then the volume is double. So this relation basically shows that there is direct relationship. So we'll have uh, a small uh, video I would like to show you about the introduction of this gas law. Let's start it. This is a quick illustration of Charles' law. Charles' law is the relationship between volume and temperature of a gas. Um, we're going to keep the pressure constant and we're going to keep the number of moles constant. As you see here, we have our classic illustration of piston and cylinder where we entrap a certain volume of gas at a given pressure. In this particular diagram, we're going to now add heat to it with some fire or whatever you want to do to heat the temperature up. And then as you can see, as the molecules become hotter, they have more force, they travel quicker, they lift the piston up to a much bigger volume. And so this illustrates the fact that when you increase temperature, you increase the volume. And then if you allow it to cool, take away the heat and allow the gas to cool, the gas will now fall back to a smaller volume as you go to a smaller temperature. So Temperature and volume are directly proportional. You increase one, you increase the other. And if you want them to be directly proportional exactly, you got to use absolute temperature. So you use the Kelvin temperature. If you double the Kelvin temperature, you will double the volume. And this little illustration here shows you the volumes going up by twice and going down by half as the temperature does the same. So you have seen there that how temperature affects the volume. And then we move to the next slide. Here you can see uh, that what type of mathematical relationship we can establish between these two variables. So because uh, we can uh, have this uh, relationship, V over T is equal to K. So uh, there might be different values of uh, volume. There might be different uh, values of temperature. So as we will change the temperature, there will be a change in volume. But for different conditions, the net change will be constant. As you can see here, that if at V1 and T1, the first volume or the initial volume is V1 
and the initial temperature is T1, then we increase the temperature, then if we increase the temperature from T1 to T2, then there will be change in volume. What will be changed? It will shift from V1 to V2. So the net result we uh, get here that always uh, there is a constant relationship for different uh, changes or changing the conditions. For example, if this is V1 over T1 is equal to uh, the second stage V2 over T2, it will be equal to the third stage V3, T3, then V4, T4, and so on for the Vn and uh, Tn for unlimited uh, number of changes. The value of this constant will be the same. So what we can show by this uh, picture, you can see that here the atmosphere is one atmosphere. Here the temperature uh, pressure is one atmosphere. We have already talked about in the definition of this Charles law that we will not change the pressure. So we have uh, kept this uh, variable constant. If we see the temperature here, then here the temperature is 200 Kelvin <clears throat> and we we'll change it to 400 Kelvin. Then what will happen? There will be a change in volume. What change? It will change from 0.5 liter or the half liter to 1 liter volume. So it means by increasing the temperature, the volume will increase. So there is direct relationship between uh, the two variables. So it is not uh, a difficult, it's just a simple uh, relation and we can show this uh, relationship by this graph uh, that as we are going uh, to increase the temperature is regularly increased in different steps then there is a direct relationship as shown this yellow line between volume and temperature and the volume is also increased. So, uh, before going to the combined gas law, uh, I, I would like to go back on the previous slide and I want to show you uh, one more video. Uh, Hello and welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. Today we're going to talk about Charles' law, uh, the, a nice follow up to Robert Boyle's law. Um, Charles, Jacques Charles, uh, pretty famous. Uh, scientist. Uh, beyond, besides giving credit for Charles' law, which although um, really was a, a, a rediscovered by another guy named Guy Lussac, um, that we'll talk about a little later, uh, or Gay Lussac, um, he actually gives credit to Charles because Charles uh, did the work, although unpublished, about 20 years prior. Um, another interesting fact about Jacques Charles is he was one of the first people to experiment with lighter than air balloons. Um, and so the legend goes that uh, he, uh, he, he and his brother uh, released a uh, balloon in Paris um, and were able to fly around, got, uh, got up to about uh, 3,000 feet tops, uh, but they terrified the peasants, and when they landed, they destroyed the balloon. So um, that sounds like a good story there. Uh, also, uh, if you paid a lot of money, you got to be right up front to watch the, um, the balloon launch. So that was like, I guess, the first uh, Kickstarter campaign <laughs> was right there, some crowdfunding. But anyway, all right, Charles Law. Um, it's the relationship between volume and temperature. And I like to think of Charlie Brown. You know, think of Charlie Brown with a balloon. If Charlie Brown, uh, you know, if Lucy tricked Charlie Brown into going into a meat locker, oh, rats, you know, he'd be sitting there all cold and the balloon will get smaller. Um, if you don't believe me, take a balloon full of air and stick it in the freezer. Come back a, a little while later and you'll see that the balloon got smaller. Now, kinetic molecular theory explains that quite well. Remember, if the uh, molecules are slowing down, the collisions are going to go down. And a balloon has a variable volume, so it's actually going to shrink. So um, remember that all these gas laws are based on the principle that all other things are equal. You know, so for Charles' law, uh, the amount's not changing, the pressure's not changing. For Boyle's law, um, the temperature's not changing, the amount's not changing. So everything else has to stay equal. If you start changing more than one variable, you have a different law. And so as the temperature goes up, the volume goes up, and vice versa. As the temperature goes down, the volume goes down. Again, if, uh, you know, uh, if Charlie Brown's balloon were to end up inside an oven, um, it would expand uh, until it eventually popped, probably because of the pressure. So again, so keep, keep that toy balloon idea in mind. Now, I've, I, I tried really hard. It's, it's, it's really 
only relevant. This law is really all about changing temperature to look at volume changes. You know, I've been racking my brain to come up with an example of the color area, uh, the, uh, the idea that could you change volume um, to get a temperature change. But the only problem is if all other things being equal, I can't think of a situation where you're going to change volume uh, but not change pressure or amount. And so really, Charles' law is mainly used with increasing or decreasing temperature. I just can't think of any example where you could change the volume and hold everything else constant. So... Uh, so that makes Charles Law a little easier. So let's look through two examples of Charles Law, just like we did for Boyle's Law. Pockets. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so uh, we've got a, uh, a sample of gas occupies 24 cubic meters. Um, what would the volume become at 400 Kelvin? So if we multiply the temperature by 4, um, we should expect that the Volume should also increase by a factor of four. Notice that the temperature is in Kelvin. Remember, Kelvin is an absolute temperature scale. If you leave your temperature in Celsius, you will get the wrong answer, and a lot of the time you will not even realize it's the wrong answer. So just be really careful about that. Anyway, so V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Um, that's Charles' law. Again, V1 over T1 have to equal a constant. So if one goes up, the other goes up. So it's a nice way to remember your direct relationship. I like to solve for the variable in question because then I can just plug in my stuff and the units will take care of themselves. So Kelvin over Kelvin will cancel out. Um, so then I'm left with cubic meters uh, times 4, so 4 times 24. So it's exactly what I thought, um, 96 cubic meters. So that makes sense. As the temperature goes up, the volume's going to go up. And we'll look at one more example here. So... I've got a 300-degree um, balloon. Um, what's going to happen to the temperature if the volume expands? All right. So, again, notice that I'm dealing with changing temperatures, you know, and seeing what happens. Um, so I'm just kind of asked, I asked it backwards, but nonetheless. Now, notice that what I did is I changed the temperature to Kelvin. If you don't do that, you will get the wrong. Well, it'll look like a fine answer, but it'll be wrong. So I'm going to solve for the variable. This time I'm solving for T2. And I'm going to plug it in. Again, liters are going to cancel out this time, and I'll multiply the temperature by 3. And so it's exactly what I thought. Again, I'm limited to two sig figs in this case uh, because uh, 2.5 and 7.5 only have two sig figs. So there you are, Charles' law. Um, that follows up Boyle's law. We'll continue on to Gay. So uh, this was what about Charles? I know you were able to understand that how uh, we can change on the temperature and how we can calculate the volume respectively from this change in temperature. So we move to the next slide. Here we have the combined gas law. We talked about uh, the Boyle's law, then we talked about the Charles law, then uh, we want to combine these both ones. So as you can see here, that we have a relationship for the Boyle's law, uh, V is inversely proportional to the pressure, then we have the Charles' law, volume is uh, directly related to temperature, then we combined these both lines here, and the number of moles is uh, being constant, then what uh, the combined law gas is. For a fixed mass of a gas, the volume is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature, the inversely proportional to the temperature. To the pressure, so we get uh, this law. At when the number of moles are kept, kept constant, then volume is uh, related to uh, this temperature directly and related to this pressure uh, inversely. And if we uh, keep this constant outside this equation, then we can show that basically this constant is the ratio between. Uh, the product of pressure and volume and temperature. So this is a pretty good equation. Uh, by this equation, we can calculate uh, for the change in uh, behavior of the gas uh, with respect to temperature. So if the pressure, volume, and temperature of the gas uh, uh, be changed from one value to the other value, then we could be able to calculate uh, for uh, these changes by using this equation that P1, V1, T1 is at uh, one stage and then we <clears throat> change the variable, then uh, we will calculate uh, the second unknown variable. 
So this is uh, the form of the combined law for the two sets of conditions. It can be used to solve problems uh, involving change in three variables like pressure, volume, and temperature for a mixed uh, or a fixed mass of gas. And then we move to the next slide. Here we have the gale Lysics law. You can, uh, if uh, you observe this uh, relation, then you can see that pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Before this, we talked about that. Uh, the relation of the volume to the pressure or the temperature, but here we are going to study that how pressure is related to this temperature. So, uh, the Gay-Lussac's law, what it defined that the Gay-Lussac's law or the pressure temperature law, we also see this, the pressure temperature law. So, it states at constant volume, the pressure of fixed mass of the gas is directly proportional to the Kelvin temperature or absolute temperature. For so we can also conclude this type of constant here. If we uh, remove the constant of the proportionality, then we get this equation that the, for uh, different uh, values of the pressure and temperature, there would be a constant value here. The situation is again that the small k has been written. I already uh, described that this small k is used to in kinetics. So uh, this is a wrong way to use this symbol here. We should use it uh, for the kinetic constant, but here we should write the capital K actually. So you can uh, make correction accordingly. For different conditions of pressure and temperature, you can see here that the pressure and the temperature ratios are constant. So we can conclude for this relationship here. So we move to the next slide. There is Avogadro law. You can see from this relation that this uh, volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of particles. So it's a very simple law. And A is the constant of proportionality. Before this, we the constant of proportionality was shown with uh, K. But here, A is the constant of proportionality. Uh, the symbol A has been taken from this Avogadro's law. So the A is the Avogadro's constant. So at that constant condition of temperature and pressure, always the volume of given mass of gas is directly proportional to the number of moles or the number of particles. So if we uh, calculate this constant, then this is the ratio between volume and the number of moles basically. And for different uh, uh, values of the volume and the number of moles, we will be able to conclude this equation and we can extend to this unlimited numbers so v n and n n so these small steps or different values we can use unlimited values to calculate this with uh, this uh, type of calculations so if v1 is equal to v2 then n is equal to n2 this is a very simple uh, so we can again uh, state here that the equal volume of the gas is at diff at same temperature and pressure contain equal number of moles if the molar amount is double, then the volume will also be double. So this law is has also been represented here. You can see that Avogadro law states that under equal conditions of temperature and pressure, you can see here that we have not changed the pressure is one atmosphere, pressure is one atmosphere. And, and then uh, equal volume of the gases contain equal number of moles. So, equal volume here is volume uh, 22.4 liters. But if we add or remove gas, then there will be shift in volume. If we uh, change the number of moles, here we have number of moles one mole, and volume we have 22.4 liter, which is a standard uh, value for the gas. Uh, for the one liter, but if we increase this number of moles from one to the two number of moles, then what will happen? The volume would as also get doubled. So volume is going to change from this 22.4 liter to the 44.8 liter. So this is a simple relation that as we will go on increasing this number of moles, then there will be an increase in volume at constant condition of temperature and pressure. 
So here we have molar gas volume. As the name shows that molar gas volume is the volume uh, which uh, one mole of gas contain. So this is simple to understand. You can see here that one mole of gas at STP, STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. So the one mole of gas at STP is 22.4 liters. So it covers like that. Then we have the ideal gas equation. Basically, in ideal gas equation, we combine uh, different laws. Here you can see that we have combined this Weyl's law, or this Weyl's law represented by this equation. Then Charles law we have, we said that volume is directly proportional to temperature. Then Avogadro law says volume is directly proportional to number of moles. If we combine these laws, these three equations, if we combine, we get this uh, equation. Volume is directly proportional. Uh, a volume is proportional to number of moles, temperature, and pressure. So this is what we say that uh, the combined uh, equation we get here. And if we remove this constant of proportionality, then V is equal to R and T over P. Or simply, we if P is taken to the other side, left hand side, then uh, we'll get this equation. Product of volume and pressure would be equal to the uh, product of number of moles, gas constant, and T. This R is a gas constant. So, or uh, we also say this uh, law that universal gas law, so it is also called as ideal gas law because we apply to all gases uh, which exhibit ideal behavior. We already described that what is the difference between ideal and non-ideal gases. Ideal gas is the gas which obeys the gas laws at all conditions of temperature and pressure, while we have, actually we don't have any ideal gas. And the real or non-ideal gases are those which don't obey the gas laws at all conditions of temperature and pressure. So in uh, naturally, uh, all the gases we have in, uh, like hydrogen or helium, neon, argon, oxygen, nitrogen. So all the gases, basically these are uh, non-ideal or real gases. We don't have any ideal gas, but we try to uh, we try to handle these gases so as they they become uh, equal to the ideal line or closer. We want these gases to uh, come closer to the ideal behavior. So uh, this is the reason we uh, study these gas laws. Then uh, the equation we uh, studied before, the equation two is the ideal gas equation we have already discussed, and the R is the gas constant. So the ideal gas equation holds uh, fairly accurately for all the gases at low temp pressure, low pressures. When if n is equal to one mole, then the above equation becomes this one. We uh, studied about that P is equal to n R D. If n is equal to one mole, then the value of n would be multiplied by this RT and we will get P is equal to RT. So this uh, ideal gas equation is the basic equation of a state for a gas because it contains all the variables, temperature, pressure, volume, and number of moles. We already uh, discussed in the start of this lecture that we'll uh, have discussed the parameters or variable of gases. So we discussed that temperature, pressure, volume, and the number of moles are uh, the parameters or the variables which define actually the condition or the behavior of a gas. So we use these uh, variables to describe completely the condition or the state of any gas we have. So if we know the three of these variables, then we can uh, judge the fourth one. We can calculate for the fourth one. So the numerical value of R we can calculate from the above equation. R is equal to PV or NT. Then if we put the values of the pressure, volume, number of moles, and temperature, then here, as we have done here, that is here. So we calculated that the value of R is equal to 0 0.81 atmosphere liter per mole per gallon. So this is what we have for the value of R. Now uh, you have to solve these two assignments, then uh, students will solve this numerical and they have to solve similar to more problems so that they may have some practice about that. 
So thank you very much for today. Uh, this is end of our lecture.